this is a historic in initiative uh, in the sense that at the moment we do not have any international convention uh, that ensures that uh, you balance uh, the rights of uh, civilians and also of the state. Uh, we have conventions that uh, are in favor of uh, the state, but as you know, uh, historically and traditionally, it is the state that always has had the legitimacy uh, to use violence and also the monopoly to use violence. Uh, but that was to be the case because in the old days you could clearly identify who the enemy is and therefore the rules of engagement were very clear. But in a situation whereby you've got individuals uh, who are now the ones that are waging war, causing destruction. And uh, you cannot tell where they are, because in a conventional war, you can tell where the front line is and where you are, but not in this case. And this is why it's important that uh, we begin to discuss uh, a convention that uh, on counter-terrorism, but also balances, uh, takes into account that human rights are important. I'm saying this against the background that, um, you know, it, it is very interesting to me that uh, if you are a historian and you look at history, you'll find that there was a time uh, in the medieval ages and so forth where you had conflicts uh, that are more or less similar to the ones that we have. We had people who were bent on the stakes uh, because they were different, uh, you know, religious beliefs. So we are, in a way, back to where we were. The only difference being that uh, uh, at the moment uh, we have um, uh, individuals who can access, uh, you know, very powerful weapons uh, cause a lot of uh, you know, destruction. But also the modern uh, you know, uh, terrorism and counter-terrorism uh, no longer requires uh, conventional journalists to cover them. Because in a way, every individual is now a journalist because through your, your cell phone, through your iPad, etc., you can also take the pictures live as they are. That's why you'll find that in most of the broadcast, uh, they will broadcast the clips and they will say to be confirmed. But what is there to confirm? Because uh, we live now in an interconnected world. And ICT has also uh, made it possible for those who espouse you know, terrorism to make attacks that are high profile in order for them to attract uh, attention to their own cause. Whether that cause is legitimate or not is another issue. But what is happening now is that everyone is using the media, the instantaneous media, in order to reach out to uh, the global community. So let me say this to you that, uh, yes, this is a very important uh, you know, meeting. Uh, I have a couple of my member countries that are here, but I intend uh, uh, in March when I have my meetings of foreign affairs ministers to have a presentation of this so that the 19 member group begins to take uh, ownership and participate uh, in this program. So uh, it's all in, in pursuit of uh, uh, all of us trying to explore ways and means in which we can have a more a peaceful world, a more harmonious uh, world. It's going to take some time, but uh, the seed has been planted. And I can tell you that um, uh, as we all now work together, both the governments, uh, the civil society and other actors, we should be able to build enough momentum to make sure that we have a global uh, convention in a couple of years. It's not going to be easy because, uh, the, you know, it's all because of uh, uh, the fact that as long as we adopt the position that I'm 100% right, you're 100% wrong, 
then there will be those who will argue that those who cause uh, uh, death of non-combatants, of civilians, uh, uh, you know, uh, should have no uh, rights at all because they've already done that. So what I'm saying to you is that, yes, it will take some time, but the seed has been sown, and as I've indicated, uh, we are on the right track. Well, my message is uh, the Global uh, Network for Right Development is doing an excellent job. In fact, they are occupying uh, a space because uh, the, the law of nature says when there's a vacuum, something was occupied, but this is timely in the sense that uh, they are better placed to uh, bring about this consensus. Obviously, in the global world in which you live, there will be contestations as to who really is going to uh, take the lead. So I'll not be surprised that going forward, you'll find that there are those who are also going to come up with more similar initiatives, but with a different you know, agenda. This one is non-partisan in the sense that uh, it does not involve uh, those that have got any ideological fixation. We are simply saying, let's deal with root causes. But in also in addressing the root causes, but also find out how, and let's also ensure that the rights of those who are alleged to be on the other side uh, are not uh, trampled upon, because they have got their own rights, just like those on the other side have got their own rights. So. It is not a question of either you are with us or you are against. It's a question that we all have got to work together for a peaceful, harmonious world.